Hey guys! So, yes, the shelves are up. Yay, I don't have everything on them yet. Also, I have a cold, but I refuse to be stopped at this point. So I thought I'd get a hot toddy and then I would come on screen and talk to you guys because that sounds wise. Alright, so there was this story though that I came across that I kind of felt like I had to share now. So over in Victoria, Australia, which was obviously a complete nightmare during COVID uh, in terms of like individual rights, freedoms, religious worship, all of it. Um, they have a new role, a new governmental role. It's the Parliamentary Secretary for Men's Behaviour Change. Um, because, as they keep saying, the statistics are alarming. That's the phrase they keep using, uh, which is apparently, I mean, I presume, a an indication of the fact that, you know, obviously, uh, rates of violent crimes are higher, you know, committed by men than they are by women. Obviously, that's always going to be the case. Um, but any, in any case, um, the person who has been nominated to lead this role is a guy named Tim Richardson, who's a member of parliament already. And so I think that whenever you, like, okay, even if you go into, even if you think this is a great idea, I know you don't, but even if you think this was a great idea and you thought that this is, you know, the plan for the future and the way that we change men's behavior, which we want to do, is by some bureaucrat uh, leading the way. And you have to ask, okay, but what does the ideal man look like according to the ethos that we're going to put forward? Because if you want to change men's behavior, you have to say, well, to what? What is our ideal? Okay, follow me th through here. And so this is why I looked at Tim Richardson to get a better look of what the male ideal might look like according to I'm just gonna say other people. Let's go take a look at this video that I found. Happy Idaho Hobbit Day, everyone. It's Tim Richardson here. Okay, let me stop. I know you're wondering, what is Ida Hobbit Day? Because you're all bigots on this channel. Um, Ida Hobbit Day is the international day against homophobia, biphobia, and transphobia. I'm sure that you all had big celebrations. Now let's continue. Here, the state member for Mordialic added the beautiful rainbow drops in our local community and I want to give a big shout out to our LGBTIQ, IA plus communities and I love it when they do that, when they unironically give all the different letters and then the plus because I don't want anyone to feel excluded but also I don't have enough letters to include, you know, every different narcissist who has their own different issue and wants particular acknowledgement. Now, but let's continue. Our Rainbow Youth celebrating Ida Hobbit Day. We see you, we love you for who you are. And by who you are, we, we are identifying you entirely by your sexual attractions and deviancies. We've got some challenges in our community with 68% of people not out of work and two out of three young people experiencing abuse just for who they are. Okay, now I kind of wonder how they are defining abuse in this sense because, I mean, I would bet money on the fact that they consider abuse as anybody using the correct pronouns to identify them, you know, referring to a man as he and a woman as she and so on, or anyone refusing to sort of play ball with their different um, games, or anyone who tells them that they shouldn't, you know, like say live a homosexual lifestyle, that it's bad for them, that it's bad for any partners that they have and so on. I imagine that they consider all of that abuse. So allies and all of our community have to step up to make sure that we support our LGBTQIA plus communities into the future. And so getting on the rainbow, speaking up and always each and every day in Victoria, promoting love, respect and inclusion is what we're all about. So we see you, we love you. Okay, I'll, I'll just stop it right there because I can only take so much and I'm sure that you can too. Um, but now you're ready to, what is it? get on the rainbow, I think is what he said. This is our ideal man, the man who will change the behaviour of all other men for the betterment of people kind. We should probably go with people kind in this particular instance. Um, yeah, because that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, I, ultimately, if you're going towards something, if you're going towards an ideal, I kind of had to see what it is that you're going toward. And it's that, which is kind of embarrassing. So the ideal man is gay presenting, um, according to essentially modern society, right? Because um, I'm not saying that, the guy, that that particular guy is homosexual himself, but he presents himself like one and is really 
uh, effeminate. So that's that's what they're what they're pr promoting a sort of lack of values and effeminacy, a lack of actual masculinity. Because right now we're in a society where I do think it's like straight men ought not exist. That's the message that is sent. It is sent whenever they apply for, say, grants from the federal government here in the United States. Right? I'm sure it's the same in Australia, but definitely here in the United States um, for colleges. You know, if you're like the ultimate, the worst is the straight white male. Right? You've got the, the fewest advantages offered to you by society, despite what you're taught in colleges about them having advantages. They actually don't when it comes down to actually using them. Um, because we don't have an oppressive society that's run by straight white males for the sake of straight white males. That's just not the case. Um, so if you are, you know, a, a young man growing up in the modern culture, like, how are you supposed to present, you know, in a way that that would be right? Because um, like, according to modern standards, it seems like they, they should, in some sense, not exist. They can't even... Like, it's difficult to talk about um, male existence without talking about it in the frame of male existence in relation to women because the entire purpose of say this uh, this new role is to you know reverse the the statistics of violence and so on well okay but if a guy offers assistance to a woman in a modern society it's considered to be offensive or even a microaggression if he implies that she can't do it by herself right if he talks to a woman without him, without her talking to uh, him first, that's him being harassing, right? And then, of course, he has all these different institutional problems on account of the fact that he is a guy. And it's like, I know what, what I want in terms of, like, culture and in terms of masculinity, and I don't want a culture of chivalry, but feminism, especially in its later incarnations, explicitly opposes that and considers it to be offensive. So I can understand like a lot of guys, I don't think know how to react. And if I was the mother of a young man, it would be really difficult for me to, you know, tell them how to react and then just like stay away from like being in a room with a woman alone and nobody else being around, you know, unless you're married to her because you just never know. Uh, and the entire culture is like framed against you to not give you due process or anything like that. So, but then there's this guy, this Tim Richardson, who has, accepted this role which is like the most effeminate humiliating role that i can think of like as a woman i can't imagine being in charge of you know some agency or group to try and reform women, like women's behavior like how self-effacing and humiliating would that be um but he did it and he embraced it. You know, this wasn't just like, oh, I've, I've got this role, role, great. No, he's like bragging about this this thing where he's going to change things. And, and really, is he going to change things? Of course not. Of course not. For one thing, because nobody looks up to somebody like that. They don't. There's no like leadership uh, skill in what we just saw. That's not something that people want to like follow. He's not... <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to be um, the light that people try and uh, move themselves toward. So there's that. But obviously, I don't think that any bureaucratic body is going to, you know, change the way that men act. We have a culture that that prevents men from really being men in a healthy way, from that, that penalizes actual acts of masculinity um, and chivalry. So that's what I'm getting at. I think we actually have like this this culture that specifically like pushes men towards effeminacy and that also prevents them from growing up like past. Because I think that like when when men are boys, they are like you know like inherently a little bit more. I'm not sure feminine is the right word, but I think you know what I'm getting at before they actually become um, men. And some men just kind of like st are stuck there in this juvenile state and aren't becoming men in part because of the fact that we don't have fathers, but we also don't have male leaders in our society anymore, which, which you know, because our male leaders look like Tim Richardson. <laughs> um, but I mean, the entire project is kind of, it's interesting because they're willing to label men as a problem in a way that they wouldn't be able to label any other group. So I don't think they could do, you know, the women's reform group. I don't think that, I mean, even if you take crime, you can, you can make the argument, okay, well, maybe they're just doing it because crime rates are specific to men, which, okay. So if you look at crime rates to target a group for behavior modification, then why are we just looking at sex? 
You want to look at race too? And create similar bodies based upon demographics to reform the behavior of groups that are most likely to commit crime on the basis of race? I don't think anyone's doing that. I don't think anybody is willing to do that. Not to say that it would be effective, but that's not the point. The point is, they're willing to do it for just men because men have become the scapegoats in a dying society. And they're not the problem, they're not the reason that the, the society is dying. Um, I mean, honestly, I think that that's like an absolute moral bankruptcy in our society is the reason that it's, that it's dying, just to be clear. Um, but that's the thing, it's like, so it's not as objective as you think. It's not like, oh, well, men are committing these crimes and therefore we have to have this body in order to fix it. Um, no, not really, because they're refusing to look at any further statistics. What they're doing is they're singling out one group that it's okay to single out in order to target them for behavior modification into something like a different group, right? Because you, you, you don't want men to be more like manly, you want them to be like less masculine. So it's like you want to erase uh, men and all that is masculine. There's a, there's a really good book by Anthony Esselin called No Apologies, um, kind of about this topic if you're interested in... I think I actually have that actually up. There you go, look at that, how convenient. Um, in any case, yeah, I think that it's awful for young men and boys in our society to grow up basically being told that there's something inherently wrong with being male. Um, there's not. It's a truly evil message that's also um, so destructive to our society.